This video was sponsored by The Great Courses Plus. It's a service where you have access to fantastic lectures by top professors. One of these lectures inspired the creation of this video, so stay tuned till the end of the video to find out more. Look around you. We can tell that there are at least three spatial dimensions. Cool. Within said dimensions exist matter. Things consisting of atoms and molecules that exist within this three-dimensional space. But there seems to be something else as well. Existence isn't static, unmoving. We can move about this three-dimensional space using a byproduct of some fourth dimension. Let's call it time. You understand fairly well that time is currently passing. Surely things happened before this moment, the past, and we assume things will happen later on, the future. Simple enough. We accept these rules. After all, it's all we know. But still some questions pop up. So let's call this fabric of reality, all of existence, all created entities of space and time. Nothing exists outside of life. Well, probably. It is all. All that is and that will ever be. So how did it start? What forces created it? How big is life? Does it stop? Now, we don't know the answers and we probably never will, but our like-minded ancestors, other compilations of matter, assembled in a very similar way, have found a few details that give us some information. This concept, our perception of life, has changed quite drastically in the past 2,000 years or so. See, in the second century, we had a seemingly safe assumption. This gigantic rock we move about on Earth is the center of life. Other things such as the sun and planets move around us. Life isn't very big. We can see a few planets, but outside that, it's probably just an end, a conclusion. As for the origins of life, that's anybody's guess. Religion is literally the only assumption we have. For a long time, for many, many, many generations of human lives going and passing, this view of life is fact. As time goes on, more complex theories arose as us humans tried to wrap our brains around this reality we find ourselves in. The best idea was that around the Earth is these celestial spheres. Each planet and the sun are just giant balls on these spheres. The stars are just holes that light seems to come through. And people accepted this. But something changes. 1500, Copernicus. The proposal? That giant ball of light and heat is actually the center of our life and all existence. Our rocky ball is actually just another planet orbiting around it. The center of all? Blasphemy! Don't worry guys, they'll warm up to it. Now, it should go without saying, our perception of life was, compared to today, quite limited. Why are we stuck to this giant rock ball? Can you just keep cutting matter in half indefinitely? Is there even a basic building block to matter? Who knows? Eventually, this leads to better theories. Other stars are just more suns like our own, with their own planets. What do you know? Life gets bigger. Over the next few centuries, we make some good advancements. You got Newton with his physics and maths. Two new planets are found in our own solar system nonetheless. We're learning stuff and having fun at the same time. Still, some questions remain. Well, I guess these weird photon things are peculiar. Particles need a medium to travel through, but space is supposed to be a vacuum. So I guess space isn't a vacuum, and some weird thing is out there letting light go through. The ether, as it was called, must span these empty regions of space. But it doesn't. Light just goes where it wants, regardless of your fictitious ethers. So in 1905, this real Einstein named Albert decided to change the world. Light goes the same speed in a vacuum, and that speed is the fastest that fast can go. So if you look in the night sky, that light is from the past. That'll be important at some point. But it doesn't stop there, no siree, as an Edwin Hubble discovers two pretty important things. The stars we see in the sky aren't the only stars. We have this collection called a galaxy, and there's quite a few of those too. And this weird empty space between galaxies is just getting bigger, expanding. Life itself is expanding, constantly. And that causes some issues for us, the humans. As the expansion of the universe increases, at some point its expansion outpaces the speed of light. So all those galaxies out there become invisible. As in, they will become so far away that the light will literally never reach us, and their existence is outside our observable universe. Now that's just tragic. So today we understand a bit better our place in this universe. We are on a rock orbiting a ball of gas that itself is orbiting a giant collection of gas in a big black hole, which is in itself moving away from billions of other giant collections of things. So now it seems nearly infinite, for at least all we know. We can't see everything, and considering space itself is expanding, we probably won't. But is that it? Is that life? Considering every couple centuries our definition and scale completely changes, probably not. But the other questions still remain. What created this? The Big Bang may have created our universe, but what was before that? And before that? 
and so on and so forth. And scarily enough, it doesn't stop there. Say we have our universe, with its set of laws and physics and our perception of its four dimensions. It's very, very possible that this is just one universe, a part of many others, possibly with their own laws and physics or lack thereof. And this omniverse could be a part of something bigger, say a collection of omniverses, which could be a part of something bigger, say all of existence, which could be a part of something bigger, and so on and so on, a cosmic loop. So with this in mind, you can come to your own conclusions on the true scale of life. And as for your place in it, well, you are a compilation of matter that is capable of contemplating the purpose of its own assembly into a compilation of matter that is capable of contemplating the purpose of its own assembly into a compilation of matter that is capable of contemplating the purpose of its own assembly. This video was inspired by a lecture which was featured in the video service The Great Courses Plus. The inexplicable universe, unsolved mysteries, taught by Professor Neil deGrasse Tyson. In this series, he discusses the mysteries beyond the cosmos, and what some of the answers might be. You can access this and many numerous courses through The Great Courses Plus. It's a subscription, on-demand video learning service with over 10,000 video lectures taught by professors in basically every field, from science to art, and most importantly, history. Courses even hosted by National Geographic and the Smithsonian. It's the best way to be stress-free while at the same time experiencing a college-grade lecture. I use it for my videos all the time. So if you want to learn more about the universe, click on this link to get unlimited access to courses and videos. Just visit thegreatcoursesplus.com slash knowledge. The link is provided in the description below.